is what storm surge looks and sounds like when it takes over a home. Waves are coming through. Cliff Choke and his son made the mistake of staying in their house during Rita. Their video camera documented the destructive power of the water. There ain't much left in this house. What happened to the Chotes happened to thousands of New Orleans area families. Alvin Butler is still struggling to rebuild his flooded home in the Ninth Ward. All you got to do now is just say, Hurricane, just leave. You know, just hope for the best. Just hope that you don't get the water. If there had been buoyant foundations on these shotgun houses here uh, at the time of Katrina, when the floodwaters came, the houses would have floated. Former LSU professor Elizabeth English has taken on the Ninth Ward as her project and after the storm worked on a solution that she believes could save houses like these in another flood. Sandbags over here. English and seven LSU students worked to make a prototype of an amphibious house. They put it to the test in a large tank they built to prove it would literally float in a flood. This is a way of making that house safe from flooding without destroying the character of the neighborhood by raising the house way up above the street. It's a much cheaper solution to providing flood protection than permanent static elevation, as well as being a whole lot more convenient. Because if you build your house eight feet off the ground and you have a 10 foot flood, you're back where you started. The concept basically works like a floating dock. A steel frame holding flotation blocks would be attached to the bottom of old frame houses like the ones in the Ninth Ward. And there are vertical guidance posts that are attached to the house that sink down into the ground, and those telescope out of the ground, kind of like a car antenna. English's team designed this animation to show how their prototype house would float up on the water in a flood, pulling the vertical guidance post out of their sleeves. The idea is not original. In fact, English expanded on some old-fashioned ingenuity that's been in use in Louisiana for decades. I heard about it from one of my LSU students whose family had built one of these. In Point Capee Parish at Rackasy on Old River, fishing camps have withstood flooding for decades. The Oxbow Lake was cut off from the Mississippi River, and whenever the Mississippi overtops its banks, Old River floods. So about 30 years ago, one of them came up with the idea of putting uh, styrofoam blocks underneath the house and four posts at the corners of the house, and that's the buoyancy blocks and the vertical guidance system. And for 30 years, every time it floods at Old River, uh, this one goes up and down. And a lot of the neighbors have followed this example, and there are dozens of these. In the Netherlands, a country one-third below sea level, Residents have moved into the first development of their version of floating houses on the banks of the Maas River, southeast of Amsterdam. What they do at Maas Bommel is basically they made empty concrete boxes. It works like a bathtub, if you will, the way a bathtub would float. I think it's a great idea. Alvin Butler from the Ninth Ward is sold. Where the houses will float up still instead of from being on level ground where the water can give run into them, you know. And save, save a lot of your furniture and stuff with clothing and all that, you know, at least you have something to come back to. English says saving all neighborhoods in New Orleans is based on a concept as simple as the styrofoam used in these coolers that you can find in almost any household. But when it comes to FEMA and the Louisiana Home Builders Association, the idea doesn't float. John Luther with the Louisiana Home Builders Association says after Katrina, strict new codes were established for rebuilding homes demolished or damaged after the storm. They have to be elevated off the ground, and he says floating houses would not fit that criteria. I would venture to say that, that FEMA uh, and the NFIP would have a very hard time evaluating a house that's floating on water to know, you know whether or not that it would be a, 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 a good risk to insure for flood insurance. It hasn't been done before in the U.S. So we don't have the code regulations that allow it. So people are scared to try something new. In fact, FEMA Branch Chief Ross Richardson encouraged English not to publicize the idea. In a letter, he said, We have major concerns that this type of development does not meet the minimum national flood insurance program. With that in mind, I would highly recommend that LSU withholds any information to the public until the recommended concept meets all local regulatory requirements. But what about the success of floating homes in the Netherlands? Why are we so different? 
Because in the Netherlands, yes, perhaps you have a lot of water, but you don't have the high wind events that we have here in, in the, the New Orleans metro region. And then for the camps, they are just that, they're camps. Well, I hope she come through on it. I hope they'd be able to help her out, you know. It'd be a good idea. So English is holding on to hope that something about this project will catch fire. She says she'll gain nothing personally because the idea is not original, but she believes in the concept. The house will go up as high as you need. For people like Alvin, who dread the thought of starting over again. Do the same thing I'm doing now, rebuilding.